All right, uh, so my name is Jeroen Koschorke. Um, I'm a software engineer at Netcentric and was, among other things, um, involved in the development of the AC tool that I presented uh, together with a colleague last year. And in today's talk, I would like to show you a new tool which is currently still under development and, yeah, which is a nice complement to the AC tool but can also be used without. Uh, it's called AC Validator. Uh, it's targeted to be used by testers and uh, purposes to validate AM permissions uh, in an automated way. So in the next 15 minutes, I would like to, yeah, I would like to outline its features, explain how it can be used with an AM, and show a quick live demo of the current state. So first of all, uh, why a new tool? So uh, in most AM projects, the permission setup is an important part. Um, yeah, it's, it's very crucial since this prevents the, the instance from unallowed access to content and functionalities. Um, and therefore, much effort has to be put not only in the planning and setup of the configuration, but also in the testing. Um, yeah, and testing a complex permission setup can quickly turn into a nightmare, especially if you have many content-specific groups in your project. Uh, many different combinations of content areas have to be checked. Um, testing has to be done on different environments to ensure a consistent state. And after changes of the setup, it has to be ensured that new rules are in place and old rules are still working and so on. Um, yeah, in order to set up, maintain, and install a complete permission setup, as I said, we already developed the AC tool. And now for making the testing easier and more consistent, this tool comes in. Um, yeah, goal is to, to support testers by taking over repetitive permission testing tasks in an automated way. So what are the main features? Um, yeah, first of all, test cases can be created quickly in, in uh, test files, uh, each defining a set of cases the tool should test against. Um, the YAML format in which the test cases are defined in is yeah, suitable also for not or not so technical users. I'll show an example on a later slide. And uh, yeah, test files can be part of your project, can be, can be versioned, can grow with your project. And uh, the different folders containing the test files can have run modes. Uh, defined in their name, They're separated by dots, similar to what you might know from most GI configurations. And that way you can control which test cases get executed on, on which uh, instance. Um, yeah, it's possible to test against the standard CQ actions, which are um, read, create, modify, delete, ACL read, ACL write, and uh, replicate, by um, yeah, simply checking the set permissions in the repository. Uh, beside that, the Tool can also simulate, act, simulate actions, and that means it temporarily creates a test user, assigns um, that test user to the group of interest, and uh, then yeah, actions like reading, modifying a page, or user operations are then done by the tool using the different APIs under the hood, like Sling API, AM, or Jack Rapid API. Um, yeah, that not only makes the testing more thorough, it also offers to, um, to add, yeah, depending on the test, to add parameters, for example, if you want to check if a uh, modification of a page is possible, you can specify concrete properties that the tool should try to, to, to change. Or when testing, if a page can be created under a certain path, you can also pass or specify a template for, for that test and see if that is possible. And of course, the tool does not leave any persistent changes in the repository after um, such simulations are done. And so far, what is supported to be simulated is um, yeah, our page, page management related uh, stuff like um, reading, modifying, deletion, creation, and replication of pages, and also user and group management related uh, actions uh, like yeah, group and user creation, group user deletion, and uh, adding users to, to groups. So um, a few words about the YAML format. Uh, as I already said, uh, it's quite good readable for not so technical users. And in addition to pure YAML, it's also uh, possible to define variables for convenient usage of often used strings throughout the file, and also to use loops for, for similar test cases. Um, yeah, and each test file can then contain page-related tests or user-related tests. So um, yeah, here a small example for you to get an impression how that looks like. On the very top of such a test case file, you can have um, yeah, the variables block in which you can define an arbitrary number of variables. Um, as you can see in this example, I defined uh, a variable named retail and assigned the value of path content we retail to it and use it later in the file for a test case referring to it via dollar sign and the variable name in brackets. 
Um, a variable block is then followed by a test block, denoted by the designator uh, tests. And inside a test block, yeah, first the group for which you would like to test permissions gets denoted via its group ID. And then you can uh, define page test cases under the designator pages and um, user or group related test cases under the designator user admin. And in this example, you can see that I defined one page test case in which I test the modification of two properties named uh, JCR title and summary, um, which I expect to be allowed for the test group. And uh, furthermore, I want also to simulate that test. And as you can also see I'm, here, I'm using a loop to extend the test to, or for, for different languages. Second test case is a um, user or group related test. Therefore, it's placed in the user admin block. And here I want to test if the group test group is allowed to assign users to the group called test group two. And uh, also here, I expect this to be allowed. So an extensive documentation of all possible options uh, is available in the GitHub project. OK. Um, yeah, integration in AIM, in AM. So which ways do we have to execute the cases? So basically, there are three ways. Um, First of all, there's a GUI that is implemented in Granite UI, which offers a uh, yeah, convenient way to select and execute test files in the repository. And furthermore, those test files get presented in a nice pie chart kind of style um, together with a list of all executed test cases, exposing more details about each test. Then you have the option to uh, run test cases uh, inside a health check. And also, there's a GMX uh, MBN exposing a method in which you can pass uh, a path to a test file or a folder containing test files and execute them and see then a textual overview showing the test results. All right, so let's do a quick live demo. So for the live demo, I prepared two things. I uh, prepared two uh, small test files called test1 and test2. Um, both contain a couple of tests. The first one for a group called test group one and the second one for a group called test group two. Uh, furthermore, I prepared the permissions in the system um, so that the tests will be successful in the first run. Yeah, and now let's first go to the JMX ambient. Um, so here I have a method run test uh, in which I can enter the path to the folder containing those test files and can execute the, the tests. Oh, sorry. You don't see anything? <laughs> sorry for that. Um, why is not? Sorry. OK. Um, yeah, as, I see, as you can see, I pasted the path to the, the folder I have prepared in uh, CRX containing the two test files. And uh, yeah, here I see an uh, overview of or the, 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 the results of the execution. Uh, at the bottom, you see um, the summary result. Um, yeah, see that five tests have been executed, uh, executed uh, five tests were okay, and zero tests failed. And then above, you can also see the same kind of information for each individual test file. Um, now let's quickly go to the health check. I already prepared a tag for this. Let's execute the check, and you can also see information, the information that both test files were executed successfully. Um, next, take a look on the GUI. Here you can, in the first step, can, you can enter the path to your folder containing the test files. And the next step, OK, if you want to skip all simulations, you can do that. You can adjust this here using this checkbox. Uh, and in the next step, you can select again the found uh, test files inside the folder. And pressing the Run button executes the tests. And as you can see, in this case, all tests were um, executed successfully. So this is 
you can see this in the in this uh, chart here and uh, also in the informations displayed underneath here you have the option to show the details about each run test and exposing uh, yeah some some more information about each test case okay so in the next step i will provoke a failed test case and uh, i do that by simply changing one permission from allow to deny. That should do the trick in this case. Let's save it. And let's now execute the test again. OK, now you see that in the test 2 YAML, uh, one test failed. And here you see some more information exposed which test it was. Now let's do the same for the health check again. And you see that, yeah, one test file failed. And finally, in the GUI, this looks like this now. So you see the, the graphic changed, the percentage, overall percentage, percentage value changed. And you can see that in the details of the test 2 YAML, the failed test case is marked in red, exposing more information <laughs> about it. Yeah. So, yeah, that pretty much is it. Um, yeah, the tool is still in development. Um, expect the release um, during October. Feel free to already check out the GitHub project. And, yeah, thank you.